Well, many people find it hard to imagine that they could ever lose track of their money. After all, it's hard-won earnings that you've accumulated over a lifetime. But actually, if you've ever lost a pound down the back of the sofa, you will know that you, it is actually quite easy to lose track of your money throughout your life. So, for example, many people are given premium bonds as a child, and then you might move or get married and change your name, um, forget to send your new address to just one company, and you could lose track of your money that way. And in fact, there is billions of pounds in some financial assets. Um, that's not just your bank or building society account. It could also be a pension you've lost touch with, some shares. So it's really important to keep track of your finances. And in fact, there are a lot of ways nowadays that make it a bit easier for you to do that. If, for example, you think you might have some money in a bank or a building society account, or a national savings bond you've had for years, they're, they've banded together all those organisations, the British Bankers Association, the Building Societies Association and National Savings and Investments and they now have just one website that you can log on to and register a claim for them to search their databases to see if they've got any money. But I should stress that you don't have to do it online. All three organisations actually have phone numbers and claim forms that you can ask for if you want to, to send a claim in. You don't have to have all the documentation before you send off a claim, but obviously you do need something to help the organisation track your money down. So for example, if you've got an old passbook, that can be very helpful, um, and if you've got some piece of paper with an account number that will be incredibly useful as well. Of course it is possible that you might have that passbook because you closed the account but you've still got the passbook so there's no guarantee that the money that you actually have got money but um, just something to start the company off in a search is, is useful. When it actually, if they find you've got some money you'll then need to show that that money really belongs to you. So that's when you will need to produce any documentation, um, something to show that you are who you say you are and at that stage you'll need a bit more information before you can claim the money. But to make the first step, something to help the company track, track the account down is, is what you need. The banks and building societies say it can take up to three months to trace your money. National Savings Investments aims to be a bit quicker, but obviously it can take time if they're getting a lot of requests for help. But one really important thing to remember is that even if it's been some years um, and you haven't heard from the bank or building society for some time, the money, if it's yours, you can still claim it however long ago it was. It remains yours. Banks and building societies do stop writing to people if they haven't heard from them for some time. That's because they're worried that if they write to you, the post could be intercepted and your identity could be stolen. So they have what's called a dormant account list. So you may not have heard from the bank or building society for some time, but if the money's there and it belongs to you, you can still claim it back. Of course, it's not just banks and building societies that may have some of your lost assets. It's also possible that you might have lost touch with some shares or some investments, a life insurance policy, or indeed, and this is really important, a pension of some sort. You can usually find out about these sorts of assets through free, um, free services offered by trade associations or indeed the government has a pension tracing service. You may find if you go onto the internet that there are lots of tracing services offering their, their help but before you go with them just check what will they actually do for you and how much will it cost because there is a big range of, of people offering different types of services and there are usually free alternatives. 
it was about a couple of years ago. I was uh, watching the BBC's Working Lunch programme, a finance programme about uh, uh, personal money, and um, they had an item on there which uh, told us about a website, told viewers about a website that uh, could find lost accounts. And um, I wasn't sure if I had any missing bank accounts. I knew I'd got some small sums of money in a few accounts, but I was fairly certain that I knew um, where those funds were. But what I was pretty sure of was that I had some premium bonds, but uh, I didn't have the certificates. Having moved house, they'd gone missing. I'd got national savings certificates from uh, NSNI, but the premium bonds, uh, I just simply couldn't locate the paperwork. And um, I put my details into the website and within a few weeks, National Savings and Investments got back to me, confirmed that I did have some premium bonds, uh, they were valid, and uh, shortly afterwards I was in possession of new premium bonds certificates and uh, the paperwork was back with me again. And although they hadn't actually won anything um, up until uh, a couple of years ago, um, at the end of 2010 they came up with a win, so that was another triumph. We understand that there's about 850 million in lost bank and building society accounts. Um, there's more in premium bonds and there's quite a bit in things like lost pensions and shares. Um, most people who trace their money successfully actually get something between £500 and £1,000. Obviously it can be less, it can be more. So don't expect huge amounts necessarily, but it is worth looking and seeing whether it, there is money there with your name on it.